Performance therapy has been around for a decade or so already, mm -hmm. but it's still very exciting. And the reason is this, that um, uh, about a decade ago, um, we were all um, accustomed to fixed field radiation or just a rotational radiation mm -hmm. through one single field, a single plane. Mm -hmm. um, but then physicists from, and radiation oncologists from Madison, Wisconsin University, thought of this great idea where just like doing a CT scan, helical treatment, we could actually treat the patient by breaking up that anatomical region into slices. And in each slice of that tissue, you could rotate around the machine and deliver the radiation many times around that. And then you go on to the next slice and the next slice and so forth. And in each slice, there can be different patterns of delivery of this radiation. And it's very useful in the sense that we could then concentrate the radiation into the area that you wanted to and without spilling too much of that radiation to the normal tissues around it. Um, it's very much like um, warfare. Um, in the past, uh, we could do what we call carpet bombing. So everything just gets the same dose or same damage by the bombs that are dropped like that. But then now, in the era of smart bombs, you have images, you have GPS to help you to guide that bomb into a specific point without having a lot of collateral damage. And tomotherapy delivers that radiation this way. So you could precisely focus that radiation with, with the help of CT scan imaging. So each day before you deliver that radiation, you can actually see where you are where the tumour is, and then you deliver that radiation. And in doing so, you do not have to allow for a larger margin of error when you are able to see that target each day. So in that way, you are delivering less of that radiation to the normal tissues around it. So therefore, you can either increase the dose to the tumour without increasing side effects, or you can actually do the same thing, just give the same dose as before, but you know that the normal tissues around it get much less dose and therefore you are getting less radiation side effects. So in terms of this technology, you could well use it in head and neck region because there are many cranial nerves around, the five senses or five organs of senses and all that are here. And so you're trying to reduce um, toxicity to those areas. So for nasopharyngeal cancers, for example, at the back of the nose, um, for laryngeal cancers, um, base of skull tumours, where there are many cranial nerves and the brain is in, in, in the vicinity, this would be very useful. In also areas where you want to reduce um, radiation to, say, the spinal cord, um, so focused radiation targeted into tumours in the spinal cord is another area where tomotherapy excels. Now, if we want to have multiple targets, we don't have to just treat one area then shift the center, the focus into a second area. So you could do all of them at one go. So from head to the knee, you could do it at one go. So for cranial spinal irradiation, where we treat it for uh, children cancers like medalloblastomas, we can do that. Or multiple metastasis, um, spread of tumors uh, to the bones, for example, several spinal levels. If we want to use it, we can use it and treat it at the same time. So that in a way also cuts down on um, the treatment time for patients. So right now we know that, um, for example, in head and, neck, head and neck cancers, when we use this technique, we potentially can reduce the amount of dry mouth. So they lose less saliva after the treatment. And if the tumour is very close to, say, a hearing nerve, or it's very close to the uh, nerves that supplies vision to that patient, you potentially can actually avoid radiation uh, to those areas or avoid overdosing the uh, cranial nerves and therefore um, causing blindness if it is uh, the visual nerve. If it is a hearing nerve, you are, tr you are trying to reduce the chance of hearing loss. Um, so those are functions that you are trying to preserve. So in that sense, it benefits the patients um, very much. In the spine, for example, there are certain treatments and certain techniques using this machine that we can reduce the bone marrow uh, toxicity and therefore the patients do not end up with too much or too low white cell count or red cell count and low platelets and that would allow us to continue 
the treatment without any disruption and therefore radiobiologically it is actually better control for that particular tumour.